Boom. That's it. Mr. Jay Z. Oh, has done it. Oh, I've got to do the clap, clap. Okay. Jay Z, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Jay Z. You're much taller. Sit down. Sit down. I thought you're much bigger than I thought. No, I thought sit you were, down, sit down. I thought you were quite a small guy. <laughs> I didn't know you were a tall fella. You're a good six footer, six two, something like that. I just saw you back there. Yes, sir. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but before we met, I was expecting a little fella to come oh, in. Oh, oh. Yeah, before we met before the show. How are you? It's nice to see you here. I'm pretty good. This, this couch looks way more comfortable back there. Yeah, well, don't complain <laughs> because you'll be back there in a minute, so just stop. <laughs> Well, welcome to the United Kingdom. I'm assuming you've been over here before, once or twice? Once or twice, okay. yeah. Are uh, you over here, you're going to be performing, you're touring, you're doing uh, headlines and that kind of thing. You're doing uh, Hyde Park, you're doing a show here, I believe. I'm a big deal. And then... <laughs> 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 uh, and you're also uh, headlining at the iconic Glastonbury Festival this summer. We'll take that pause out there. We'll yeah, make yeah, it more yeah. immediate. Push, push it a little bit uh, with the Pro Tools. Now, here's the thing, <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing about Glastonbury. Uh, there's been talk here that it didn't sell out as quickly as it normally does. They said because we have a hip-hop act as the headliner. Did news of this? Did yeah, this I heard that. Reached the States, yeah. Okay, now what do you think about that? What's the deal there, do you think? I mean, in the States, 100,000 people in a day is a lot. Yeah. But over here, I guess, is, you know, different. I, it's I think relative. it's still a lot. Yeah. Are you ready for the Glastonbury experience, do you think? Um, yeah, I got boots. Look, my pants are already, look. They're already dirty. My jeans are already dirty. Yeah, what's I... wrong with you? You knew you were going to be on TV tonight. Why didn't you make some sort of an effort? <laughs> I'm going to wear these into Glastonbury. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to break these in. You, you, have, uh, you have your own uh, brand of clothing, I believe. Yeah, this yeah, rock away. Okay, uh, so are you wearing, is this any of your gear here now tonight? Or? Don't tell nobody, but no. No? <laughs> if you meet a, a homeboy like me over here when you're here and you say... That's the kind of guy I want to see pimping my clothes. Yeah. Would you want to send me a box, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kind of generous medium. It's funny that you say that. I wasn't going to say that, but you know, because I don't really know you like that. But I've seen um, Ricky G G Gervais earlier. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and he was telling me about your weight. You don't look that big to me. I think TV, <laughs> TV adds 20 pounds. Yeah, you look yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Z. I wasn't going to bring it up because I don't really know you like that. And I don't, you know, you yeah. know, these are yeah. want to embarrass you in front of your friends. If it, <laughs> you brought it up first. Yeah. Will, can you come out sooner? Is that okay? <laughs> He's always so nice to me. Uh, okay, you are a huge uh, hip-hop star. You're a huge star in, in music generally, but I mean, I guess we talk about that kind of music. You've sold, uh, how many albums do you, do you know roughly how many you've sold? One or two or three or 50 million. 50 million uh, CDs, I guess. Really, 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 really. Hey, I have a feeling that no one in this audience bought any one of them. No, I'm sure I they did. Yeah. I bought the American Gangster one. Well, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> oh, oh. My stomach got caught on the desk then. <laughs> uh, Ricky. Hey, but that one, you have a... If you're having girl problem, I feel bad for your son. I got 99 problems and a bitch ain't one. That was a good song. I like that. I did that with uh, Rick Rubin. I didn't curse yet. I just, you know, we was back there, me and Will, and we was talking about how you can curse on TV, and we really... We, we kind of like that shit. Yeah. So... <laughs> I just wanted to get that off my chest. Okay, I feel great. Now. Get, get back to the interview. Uh, um... Let me ask you about the sort of music you write and the way you put it together. When did you first start? When did you realise that you wanted to... And I guess you started... It's fair to say you started as a rapper. You started, first of all, writing your own raps and trying to perform them. Yeah. At what age was that? Early, like I was nine. I would write on... I would, you know, just make beats on the table and write all the time. But I didn't know, you know, what it was because my mom, she told me, you know, you know how your mom tells you stuff like, you know, anything that comes in life, you got to work hard for it. But it was a gift. So it was easy for me, so I didn't really recognise it as a talent. So because on. it came easy to you, you thought maybe this isn't something that I should... But, right. but you, you stuck with it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so where were you born? You were born in, is it the Bedford-Stuyvesant part of it's yeah. Brooklyn, isn't it? And that's Brooklyn. where Spike Lee came from, I believe. I remember yeah, talking yeah, to him once. Yeah, absolutely. bed they they go, don't they? Yeah. And that was, it used to be a pretty rough part of town, didn't it? I don't know what it's like now, right, but... It's still rough. I don't live there, but it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> but you would move away, of course. You'd be, you'd be stupid if you lived there still, and you didn't have to, I guess. They robbed me. OK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, then, I'm glad no, you're that's not, not even funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to us, because we're a long way away from there. Um, They'll uh, rob you, too. <laughs> yeah, quicker. Try it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't even know what that means. You probably would scare them if you did. How, how rough is rough? How rough was it? I mean, we, we see uh, films about New York and those parts of town. Say, well, were there guns? That's was the it part nice? That was they it... make the like the um, you know when they do like the cliche yeah. of rough. That's like the cliche of rough. So, like, what, when you were growing up, what kind of things did you see? Were you witness to street crime? You saw that kind of stuff going on around you? I was partaking in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. but before you but started, yeah, I was, but not not anymore. Did you see? Uh, did you ever see anyone shot? Of course. When I was nine years old. When I was nine years old, sort of, uh, the first person I ever saw get shot in the hallway. And, you know, I'm a kid, so, you know, we run running behind and we ran up and then we hear the gunshot and the guys laid there and we're like, wow. And he was dead? Yeah. Well, I'm asking, because well, he could have been it, shot it, in the leg yeah. or something, you know what I mean? I, I, no, you know, no, I wasn't no. being facetious. So I just thought, that, that, and, that's a, and then how did that feel? Well, as a nine-year-old, presumably you knew yeah. that was around you, but did it have a big effect on you or did it yeah, sort of... absolutely. Absolutely. And then you said you got caught up in it yourself a little bit. You were involved in uh, some kind of street crime stuff. What was that? Uh, what, that was just to make some money or was it because of peer pressure? Well, nah, a little bit of both, but more to make money. Money was hard to come by. And you were looking after your mum, I believe, weren't you? Of course. Well, not really. Yeah. It's... <laughs> you know, that's always everyone's excuse. I'm looking after my mom. Yeah, yeah, but you were. She wearing... got a little bit, but I, would, I bought clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it kind of looking after your mum because she was proud of the way you were dressed. Yeah. So it's kind of, <laughs> it was a win-win situation. <laughs> uh, so how did you get out of that? How did you turn yourself around? Because let's face it, uh, the majority I, of people who get involved in that kind of thing, it doesn't end happily. It doesn't end yeah, well. Yeah, I was, I was lucky enough. I had the talent. You know, I had the talent to make music. And finally, you know, I just said, you know, I'm going to give this thing a try. I'm going to put, you know, 100% into it. And, you know, if, it, if it, you know, nothing comes of it, I'm going to go back out there. <laughs> That was my backup plan, yeah. but <laughs> That's a great luckily plan. The, the rap thing worked, and you know. Uh, you know what I admire about you, and I admire the same thing about uh, Will Smith, is you, you seem to have a lot of focus, a lot of determination. You, you, you work out what you do, you stick to it, and you really, you work at it. I know Will works about as hard as anyone can work at, in his yes, line of work. I do, actually. You, <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't he let us all know about it? But, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you have the same thing, you have real dedication and uh, you, your business empire, we can call it that, it's, you, you've kind of, uh, most things you've involved yourself in, you've made into success, haven't you? Yeah, being broke is a great motivator. Yeah. But you're a long way from being broke. I mean, a yeah, lot of people would Yeah, but it's a great motivator. It's, you know, I mean, the feeling of ever that happening again is just, you know, the strive for greatness as well, you know, to do music that's, or to do anything that's going to last after you, you know, for history. You know, that, that also motivates To me. make it just leave something behind? Yeah. That was, that was my serious moment. Y'all could put the violin on that. Yeah. Let's get back to it. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, let me ask you uh, about the kind of music you make. Because I like um, what we would call, I guess, urban music over here. That modern hip-hop sound you have Well, hip-hop music is now international. It's actually pop music. It's, it's reached that, you know, that's, that's an old term. What are you, what's your favorite kind? If we're talking genres, would it be hip-hop? No. Um, my favorite music is heartfelt music. I don't believe in the, you know, the separation of music. So as long as it's got I'll a true emotion to, in it. Yeah, I'll listen to Coldplay and listen to DMX, to 50 Cent, to Kanye West. I like and DMX. You like DMX? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, too many players, not enough. You know that one? No. <laughs> Maybe that's someone else then. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you ever want to make uh, old school kind of music? For example, your stuff's fine, all right, but listen. You listen to the beginning of, uh, say, a track by the Stylistics mm -hmm. or Tavares. <laughs> no, I'm talking about. No. <laughs> Stylistics, a little bit. Heaven. Yeah. Must be missing an angel. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Don't rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat, don't tip the boat over. Rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. <laughs> Boom, boom, it's like a boom, 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 you hey. see? Yeah, you ever want to do a song, like an old style song, more kind of melodic singing rather than rapping? You ever tempted? Yeah, it's not good. The results are not usually good. <laughs> but but what, what we do in hip hop is we'll take the sample and we'll leave the yeah. sync, the person singing on it, and then we'll make up a melody. Well, like you did with Hard Knock Life, which there was, you go. and it's a kind of a, a brilliant new sound, a different juxtaposition that comes out of it. Yeah. Um, now, uh, what do you do when you're performing? If someone goes to see you live on stage, do you have a show as well? Because I've been to see, I haven't been to see that many rap acts, and normally it's exciting, the music's great, but normally it seems to me that people just have the microphone and kind of walk up and down quite a lot. Well, I can, I can explain the whole thing to you. Yes, please. 
You got a minute? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. It takes a second. Just take your time. In rock and roll or any genre of music, usually people, I'm going to do it a little quicker. You know, usually people play and then they get discovered in some band or some, in some uh, club somewhere. In hip hop, what happens is you make a record and then you put it on the radio and then that, you know, the record usually blows up. If, I mean, if you're successful, right? And then they call you and you book a show and you're standing in front of a million people. And you and have you've got never, experience. You've never done a show. Got That's it. one reason. Two, a lot of times when the music is sampled, it's sampled as one sound. So there's no separation of the, of the trumpet, the bass line. There's no separation. So, you, so when you take the other track that you use as your bed kind of thing, you, it's already on a one it's, note it's, kind of thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. a two track. So yeah. you just turn it up. And when you turn it up, it just you lose it distorts. Yeah. Right, so I have a band. So you've got a live band live kicking band, the sound so you out behind yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. And do you do any dancing? You gotta go. Or you gotta any... go. This thing is incredible. Well, I'd like to come and see you. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you want me to come out at any stage on stage and sing some of the old school like the Tavares for you, <laughs> if there's a lull or you, or you want a romantic moment, give me a call. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Do you have any props on stage? Because last week here at the BBC, Coldplay played out the front and they ended it with a huge explosion of confetti. And yeah. that was impressive. I like that. We don't have that much money. We're not working with that Coldplay budgets. Yeah, it's a big budget. It actually looked like they shot your tie off. <laughs> is, that a, is that a sexual euphemism? No. <laughs> Are you flirting with me, Jay-Z? <laughs> nope. Hey, you're a happily married man. I like this set. Yeah. It's like art. Yeah. You I'm like into it? art now. What sort of art do you like, Jay-Z? Damien Hurst, I just... I have this... See, you sent me that. Thank you. That was a nice segue. We're working together now. Um, <laughs> my last album, American Gangster, which you was listening to earlier, I heard it blasting from your... I was listening room. to it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I, said, I said, I'm trying to beat life. This is very poetic. Get ready. Do you need some piano for this? A little bit. <laughs> I'm trying to beat life. Cause I can't cheat death. So he. <laughs> you see what James so, did? He's not giving it away for free. So, <laughs> so he made me a painting called "Cheat uh, Beat Life and Cheat Death," and they, they're together. But I separated them. But that's smart of him yeah. because he knows you're going to want to have that because it's your work. It's a I'm kind not of, pay for it though. Yeah, I bet you did. Yeah. You know, you don't give it away for nothing. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you about your wife? Can I ask you a little bit about your home life? I Whoa. know you don't talk about it too much. Whoa. You can ask me questions, I'll dance around them. It's okay. a, it's a but fantastic only because thing. You're married to one of the most uh, successful performers in her field as well. And the, the gorgeous, I've never met her, I, you know, but man, I've admired her from afar, like we all have. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> in a very safe way, uh, the beautiful Beyonce. So congratulations on that. Well done for a start. Uh, how lovely. Um, can I, I'll ask you one question here. Is it true, and I've read this, and it probably isn't true, but it is, uh, is it true that her, her bootay is insured? That's just out of line. I, I apologise, sir, but I've read this in the newspaper. That's just so far out of, you're out of bounds, brother. But it, but if you know, that, when people start talking black on you, right? You're out of bounds, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I can speak in white back at you, brother. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have no idea. It's, you know, they make up these things. They say all kind of things. Yeah. So it's not insured? Not that, I mean, I don't know. Well, I'm telling you, if my bootay looked like that, I would insure it. Ricky said. Ah! <laughs> 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 uh, will, you, will, you, will she come over to see you at Glastonbury, you know? Will she be over here watching you or is she working over in the States? Well, Miss Beyonce knows is shooting a movie currently in uh, in Los Angeles. If, if it raps before, then she probably she likes music. Yeah, so she'll come up and see you live. Maybe. Do you do you like to have her in the audience when you're doing it, or would you rather your your loved one wasn't there watching you? I mean, the more people, in there, I mean, I got to take it how I can get it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so just as long as the it's numbers tough, are there. Man, yeah. yeah, it's tough. It's tough out there. Okay. Uh, you know, what a pleasure to have you in the show. A real pleasure to meet you. I had a great time. Good. I'm very pleased. He would to hear. say great things about you. I didn't think you would live up to it, but you did, man. It's Mr. Jay Z. Thank you, Jay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm going to go the hip-hop style.
That's right. That's what I'm talking about. That one? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>